welcome to the Bucket List Project podcast, a weekly show that talks about stories from my pursuit of nomadic lifestyle around the world, interviews with interesting people who I met in this journey, and a generous dose of thought-provoking conversations around travel as a lifestyle choice. If you love to listen on topics revolving around travel, then this is your perfect companion for the ride to office, your morning jog, or in general, when you're winding down for the day. We will have new episodes releasing every Friday. So do share and subscribe to our podcast and get your weekly share of travel inspiration. How many of us remember Katrina Kaif's character Laila in Zindagi Na Milegi Dobara, a Bollywood blockbuster from 2011? Laila was epitome of free spirit who loved life and adventure. But more importantly, she was a scuba instructor in that movie who leads Hrithik, a skeptical diver, on a mesmerizing underwater adventure. As they descend deeper, Hrithik is stunned by the beauty and diversity of the marine life. He is overcoming his fears and he feels a sense of awe and wonder as he witnesses the delicate balance of nature. This is poignantly shown through tears rolling down his cheek in the movie. This scene is a masterpiece capturing the essence of scuba diving and the transformative power of nature. It is a reminder that there is still so much to wonder and discover about the world around us. While that was fiction, there is some truth to the emotions it tried to bring to the forefront. The life of a scuba diving instructor is an elegant dance between adventure and responsibility. They are interested with the safety and education of their students while also sharing their passion for the underwater world. They spend their days exploring pristine coral reefs, encountering marine life of all shapes and sizes, and teaching others how to appreciate the beauty and wonder of the ocean. Their work is not without its challenges, by the way, but the reward are immeasurable. The joy of seeing a student experience the thrill of scuba diving for the first time or of witnessing their transformation into confident and skilled divers is truly unparalleled. There are also ambassadors for ocean conservation. They teach their students about the importance of protecting our marine ecosystems and the creatures that inhabit them. They also inspire them to take action to reduce their impact on the environment. But is it all bed of roses for the instructors? To be very honest, No, it is a challenging profession to be in. They have to keep so many things in mind when they are actually teaching others to scuba dive. To start with, number one is managing expectations. Scuba diving instructors often have to deal with students who have unrealistic expectations about what diving is like. They may expect to see all sort of exotic marine life on every dive, or they may think that diving is as easy as swimming in a pool. It is the instructor's job to manage these expectations and help students understand that diving is a serious activity that requires skill and knowledge. Number two is that they're teaching a diverse range of students. So when you teach uh, people from all walks of life with different ages, abilities and learning styles, it is important to be able to tailor one's teaching methods to each individual student in order to ensure that they have a safe and enjoyable experience. Not all students are easy to teach. Some may be disruptive, unmotivated, or simply unwilling to learn. Scuba diving instructors need to be able to deal with these difficult students in a calm and professional manner. Then, number three is that they have to maintain very high level of fitness. Scuba diving requires a good level of fitness and instructor need to be able to keep up with their students. This can be challenging, especially given their hectic schedules and imagine them doing like more than 500 to 600 dives in a year. And then number four is the anxiety of seasonality and irregular work schedule. You know, uh, instructors often work long hours, especially during the peak hours or peak season. They may also have to work irregular hours such as very early morning, evenings and weekends. They also have to deal with fluctuating nature of their income um, because they are typically paid on a per course basis, which means that their earnings can vary depending on the number of students that they have. Despite all these challenges, every instructor I have met is passionate about their work. They love sharing their knowledge and love for diving with others. 
The mutual respect for ocean, its marine life and the ecosystem is a symbiotic relationship they share and cherish. It is estimated that there are about 130,000 active instructors around the globe. This is just with Bali, by the way. And if we take all the certifying agency into account, the count should be 200,000 plus active instructors. So how do superstar dive instructors prepare and make a name for themselves in this industry? And how does their world look like? I'm Srinath Shankar, your host, a Paddy Master Scuba Diving Trainer, co-founder of Pick Your Trail, India's fastest growing leisure travel brand, a digital nomad and a slow travel proponent. Today's topic of podcast, as you might have guessed, is Bucket List Careers, Scuba Diving Instructor. In this episode, I'm going to be joined by Mr. Marcel Vandenberg, my scuba diving mentor, Paddy Platinum Course Director, and possibly one of the leading voices in the diving industry. He is nothing short of a scuba diving celebrity, having his legacy spread worldwide through the instructors he has helped get certified. Welcome to the show, Marcel. It is absolute pleasure to have you on the podcast. To get started, um, you know, we would love to hear your love story with scuba diving, how you got into this and how you've reached the current position you're at. Because that's an inspiring story I have heard many times, but would love for our listeners to also get the same experience. Also, uh, an announcement to our listeners, stay tuned to till the last section of this episode. We have a special section where Marcel talks about teaching a very special diving experience where you most likely will come out of the water screaming out of joy or with tears of joy. Okay, so uh, thank you, Srinat, and uh, I'm super happy to uh, be here and, uh, and quite excited to, uh, to have a great chat with you about uh, yeah, a career as, uh, as a scuba instructor in this world. Um, yeah, how it all started out for me, uh, in 2003, I did uh, a petty open water diver course in uh, Indonesia, in the Gili Islands specifically, and um, yeah, I, I absolutely loved it in the end, but to be very honest to you, Actually, in the beginning, I didn't actually want to dive at all. Um, I thought, you know, we can see pretty fishes on National Geographic and we're supposed to be on land. But uh, yeah, then I got uh, talked into it by, uh, by my friend um, who, uh, who did this diving in, uh, in Thailand, in Koh Tao the year before and said it's an incredible experience and, and I should give it a try. So I gave it a try. Uh, I was happy to start in a swimming pool first to see if I liked it. And I kind of I liked it. Uh, it was a bit weird, the briefing on the water first time, but I liked it. Uh, but then we did dive number one. And dive number one, uh, the conditions were, were quite uh, intense, like the weather conditions. So I started questioning myself, did I actually made a good choice to do this? And then we went under the water finally. And uh, wow, when I saw that reef appearing from the bottom, it was absolutely insane experience. It it was truly for me that Little Mermaid scene where you see Sebastian going, you know, singing that song under the under the sea, you know, and it's, it was amazing. The colors, it was so beautiful. And uh, it, it wasn't just all the colors and the beautiful tropical fish, but uh, it didn't take very long for me to experience my first shark already. And that's quite unique for a lot of people when they start out diving and, and that sold it to me. Uh, instead of thinking that sharks were scary from all the movies that we were watching, it was one of the most incredible creatures I've ever ever seen in my life and it, 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 it I, I started thinking straight away you know can can I make a profession out of this so I, I, I guess it took me around 20 minutes on my first dive to start thinking about becoming a scuba diving instructor can you also uh, uh, tell us about what were you doing before getting into scuba diving yeah no like I was I was doing all kinds of you know f- things like you know working in bars and restaurants very normal jobs I guess that everybody's doing it I was I was studying also at the same time um a lot of my friends back home in Amsterdam they're all in the in the events industry in the dance scene so I was thinking about trying to get my food into the door there and I I was I was doing uh, some stuff like entertainment for for events, uh, helping and organizing with events, but but small stuff. And when I came back from that holiday and that that first diving experience was that you know I go back to my normal life and and my career was trying to form that direction for the events. And I was like, 
you know, is it, it, shall I make this big step to go for a scuba diving instructor and maybe lose everything that I've been building up back home? So that was, that was a difficult step. And now I know as well for my, for my students, my instructor students, that most of them have this big choice to make uh, at one point. It's, it's, it's an obstacle. Um, but yeah, some of my friends were saying, hey, you know what, why don't you give it a try? And if it doesn't work out, it's a bit of a long and expensive holiday, <laughs> but... Um, you know, at least you know, and, and it's not like your life ends here. If it doesn't work out after a few months, you're back and you can pick up your old life again. And, and that sort of kind of sold it to me. And, uh, and I went, um, I do remember being in that airplane going like, oh boy, you know, was this the right choice to make? Um, landing in Bangkok, which was not a tropical island and feeling a bit lonely as well in the beginning. But once I reached Koh Tao, which, which I kind of chose to do my instructor course and all my future training... I, I was it was mind blowing. It it was one of the most beautiful islands I've ever seen. Um just in nature, just just the jungle, the beaches, everything. But then then it was also the community. It was the people here. How within within a few days I made new friends, which is very important. And then of course you got the diving experiences and all the courses. So I, I think it took me a week to realize that I made the best choice of my life and every day became a better day after that. Hmm, that's a very bold decision you took at that age. Uh, I can absolutely imagine that. Uh, I would also like to kind of ask this question. While you decided to become an instructor, you've also traversed the journey of teaching instructors. How did that even happen? Right, so yeah, that's, that's actually a really good question. So in the beginning, I did not plan to become a uh, course director first. For me, it was like most people um, to become a, a scuba diving instructor. And throughout all those courses, I've had all these different instructors teaching me these different courses. And I've met and seen a lot of instructors teach it. And during your dive master course, um, you, and also your, your instructor internship, you, you sort of shadow other instructors teaching these courses. And I noticed one thing that was very important to me is that, you know, the, 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 the diving courses are standardized by the organizations. Um, and the organization that I'm with is Petty. So they, they design the courses, they say exactly how it needs to be taught. However, there's still really a lot of freedom for the individuals to sort of make it their own. And um, I've noticed that even if courses are being taught within standards, um, the instructors are definitely different. Like, for example, some instructors can be, can be very aggressive in the way that they teach, or they can be you know, very loud or uh, very arrogant. Um, um, some instructors, they're kind of like normal instructors. You know, they do their job. They do exactly what Petty tells them. And whenever it's time is finished, they go home and they watch TV, I guess. You know, there's no, there's no extra spark, but they're doing a good job. And then you got these sort of really good instructors out there that really take extra effort to really make sure that people will stay 100% safe, that they have a very good time, they listen very carefully to the students, they're able to adjust to them. But then you have a very small percentage in the dive industry, and, and that's what we call superstars. And these diving instructors, it is, it's their life. It's they 1,000% they only care about their students. And they do everything in their power on a daily basis to not just keep them safe, but uh, follow standards, but to make them incredibly happy um, to make sure that they just don't have a cool diving experience but that they have the best experience of the holiday or maybe even their lives you know they 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 they, they sacrifice their lunch breaks to help their students or stay longer in the evening for extra tutoring now why is all of this so important is because i've seen so many different kinds of instructors teaching these different things but the impact was huge to the students from people with bad instructors or normal instructors sometimes, you know, crying or trying to quit their courses or never diving ever again to those good instructors and superstars that inspiring people that never even wanted to go diving to actually become uh, a dive master or instructor themselves. And that was for me the moment where I realized, wait a second, you know, I love to teach for a long time recreational divers. But how cool would it be to actually become a course director where now I can influence the, the new generation of scuba diving instructors to become those really good instructors or, or superstars in the future? Because I do believe that a lot of it really comes down from the top. And, uh, and that was my idea. Um, besides just teaching people how to teach scuba, I was, I was really 
redesign the courses to really focus on attitude and how to create the best attitude for diving instructors, I guess. So, yeah. Well, that's a lot of clarity and vision that you have had at that time itself. Uh, and as you rightly said, uh, you know, somebody with this clarity and vision can create a lot of impact and, um, you know, shape a lot of new instructors, new generation instructors to give great experience to all the new divers out there. Okay, for somebody who is new to all of this, can you throw some light in terms of how can they become an instructor? What is their entire roadmap looking like? Right, so uh, first of all, um, if you're choosing to become a PETI instructor, there needs to be six months between your first course, which is the PETI Open Water Diver course, and the, um, uh, and the IDC course, and that's the instructor course. So IDC stands for Instructor Development Course. Um, and that is a, a small obstacle sometimes for people that have never dived before, because depending on where and how you do your courses, it takes around, let's say, three to four months to go from your open water to your dive master. But then you have that little break of like one and a half to two to three months, depending on how you plan things before you can start your instructor course. And it's important that you're aware of that. So you plan it like, what are you going to do in a break? Do you going to travel a little bit uh, uh, or are you going to are you going to go home a bit, visit your family, come back again? Or are you maybe going to try some find some work as a as a dive master, which you can as a dive master and uh, try to get a bit more experience and get some work and stuff to then start your instructor course. Um, but if you're budgeting your, your, your courses, suddenly it becomes, um, I guess it's like eight months would be a really good time frame. Not, not just six months because you still have your instructor course. You might do your specialty instructor and something else. So let's say that takes you eight months. Um, but let's say you already done your open water diver course. A lot of people have done that. Uh, six months ago, a year ago, or a few years ago, like I did, I did it in 2003. But I actually started my journey from advanced all the way to instructor in 2007. So there was four years in between. Now, now it can go a lot faster uh, because now, yeah, your advanced course, depending on where you do it in the world, but just for an example, takes around two days. Your EFR farm rescue around four days. Then your dive master course, again, it depends. Um, we like to do here around two months. That gives you a lot of extra time, extra training, uh, build up your confidence and experience. And then the IDC, plus maybe your specialty instructor course will be around a month-ish. So together, you could go from, let's say, advanced, which is still in the beginning, all the way to specialty instructor within around three months. Uh, and that is fantastic when it comes down to, you know, a budget as well. How long can you travel? How long can you stay away? Because you need to pay the rent. You need to, uh, you have to have uh, food and, and drinks and all this stuff on top of it. So it can go really, really fast. Hmm. So interesting. So it can be three months also, or it can be eight months, depending on when you've done your first course. Uh, uh, can you also, uh, for uh, you know, for our listeners, paint a very honest picture? What not to expect from a scuba diving instructor's career? Because there is so much of romanticizing that happens with this. Everybody thinks that this is all rosy picture. Yeah, that's definitely a really good question as well, because... I believe in everything, but especially in this industry, honesty is extremely important. And like I already mentioned in the beginning, you know, you, you have some, some bad uh, diving instructors out there, the, the normal ones, the good ones and, and the superstars. And uh, sometimes what happens is that people are being promised things that are not always true. Um, and if that's for just a small old diving course or whatever that takes a few days, it's a sad story when they promise you something that is not going to happen, but it's not, it's not going to change your life that much. However, when it comes down to choosing a new career path, especially, you know, becoming a dive master or an instructor, then that can significantly, of course, uh, change your life, uh, especially if you, if you get the wrong information. And it's a business in the end. Everything is a business. Yeah, let's just be honest. And now you're going to have some uh, diving instructors out there or individuals or maybe even course directors or anyone that are trying to sell their, you know, their, their dive master courses, their instructor courses. And they're, they're promising the world 
to these people that are interested in this career change. Like, it's going to be so beautiful. Every day is going to be sunshine. You're going to only have friends. The diving is going to be crystal clear. You're going to see every single fish every day and you're going to make a million dollars per day, whatever they say, right? Which is it's just not, not maybe true. And then people, they make that choice. And some people, they don't always come from a very, you know, um, wealthy background. So they really save money for this or that it's a lost savings that they invest in becoming a, a diving instructor and then maybe they've been promised the world and then in the end it's not that that life and then they have to sort of quit it and go back home and then they lost all this money too so sadly there is that side in the industry and, and sadly now as well is that you see that sometimes on social media too where these people that had that experience they try to warn other people but of course, when I hear that, it, it really hurts me and it, it breaks my heart because th th it's also not true. There is so much greatness in this career. It, it could be one of the best lives you can ever have. However, to get there, you need to play your cards the right way. And you need to, like you said, expect that it, it, it won't be you know, the jackpot from day one, you, you know, like any other industry, when you come out of university with uh, your law degrees or you just become your med you become a doctor and you got all your diplomas, are you going to be the most high paid heart surgeon the next day after school? No, you, you, you also need to, you know, work for it and build up your career and uh, over time. And then, then after some time, you can have that dream job. And some people take a few years for that or longer. But some people can do that very quick after they finish their IDC course within maybe a few months or maybe even a year, they already have an incredible job in the dive industry or even their dream job um, experiencing that incredible lifestyle and, um, and, and a decent salary on the side as well. Now I have to ask this follow on question then. So how do you become that superstar or rock star instructor, as you said? So where is then the difference between the two? You know, why is there so many instructors that don't make it and they don't get uh, the dream job and why do some people can? Um, again, lots and lots of different factors. First of all, I think it starts with the individual person itself. It's, it's, it's you know, the diving instructor itself, uh, the, the attitude. So if you already have quite, let's say, um, uh, an aggressive attitude, you have no patience, you know, you... You, you, you like diving, you like fish, but you don't actually like people or teach them. But the only way for you to dive for free and look at fishes is to kind of teach some people diving. Yeah, we, we've seen a lot of those individuals in this industry. And of course, those people, they, they don't make it. Or very quickly, they lose their jobs or they earn nothing. And, and when they then are in these locations in the world, they still have to pay the rent and the food and, and insurances and all these things. So they run out of money. And then they start blaming it on everyone else except for themselves. Like, like the, the dive companies don't pay them enough. They're treated like slaves. They have to work too hard, blah, 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 blah. But in some cases, that's the truth. There are some bad dive companies out there too. But in most cases, it's just that individual that a dive company doesn't really want to hire because they're really bad instructors, especially towards students. Now, now you have the other flip side and now you have... An, an instructor candidate who has incredible attitude, who loves people, who loves customer service, tries to always improve, is not too arrogant, has a bit of humor, passion for the aquatic life. Th these people, they, they are so busy with trying to make people happy that automatically those people will want to join them on more courses and it means more money. They trust them to buy dive equipment because they truly give them the the right advice to enjoy a new mask. They um, write amazing reviews that helps. Um, they give compliments to the owners of the dive shop of those instructors. So those people, they, they don't lose their jobs. They, they get increased salaries, they get bonuses. And before you know it, they are, they are managers because they're the ones that can inspire the new generation of, uh, of those instructors. Right. Can you also throw some light in terms of how are the you know income opportunities for this particular career and is it sustainable? For, for example, an income in this industry, especially if you get paid per, per student or per course, um, some people make really low, like so low that it's just not sustainable. 
some people make like a bit of an average salary where, you know, a lot of times you live in areas where life is cheaper, maybe uh, because the, the food or the rent is cheaper than in Europe or things like that. Um, and they're happy. You know, they're the normal instructors towards good ones. But then the really good ones and the superstars, they can earn a really good income. And that income is so high, especially when you work in places where cost of living is low, that it can even be more than in some of the some of the countries that they're coming from from back home. Um, and now you're not only having a beautiful life here in a beautiful tropical whatever environment, but you also have money enough to to go traveling yourself and to visit your family whenever you want it. And then this this will be the I think the ultimate dream job. But to get there. You also need to work for it. In the end of the day, it's still a job. Um, you know, if you're going to stand on a beach play, playing with frisbees, waiting for someone to come up to you and offer you a, a diving course, that's not going to happen. You know, you need to you need to make it happen. Same as any other job, I guess. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, you know, you make it sound like any other profession, right? The ladders, you have to climb that and you need to take that effort. Uh, you know, also... COVID happened in 2020. So for this industry and for this profession, how was it pre-COVID and how is it now post-COVID? Before COVID happened, the, um, the diving industry was extremely popular, but it also um, pulled in a lot of instructors. So we had a lot of scuba diving students, but at the same time, we also were having a lot of instructors. And in some areas in the world, we almost had a little bit too many instructors that are were kind of almost competing to uh, to get that uh, to get that job. But now you're mentioning 2023, so uh, COVID happened sadly uh, around the world. Um, it pretty much shut down the, almost the entire dive industry worldwide because uh, travel was uh, uh, was shut down. Uh, severely impacted, of course, the the, the 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 jobs in the dive industry. And because of this, a lot of dive masters and instructors, they, they had to go back home. They had to find another job um, and, and, and they left. Now, there were a few instructors left that, that did some work in diving with you know, the local people because a lot of countries uh, traveling within the country was acceptable. Um, but a lot of them that stayed, they, they did like other jobs and they started working online um, the, just, to, just to cover those few years. But because so many people went home, that when the dive industry opened after COVID, there was an actual shortage of diving instructors. And this was huge. This was such a problem. Like Patty was literally like asking us, like, guys, if you have any instructors available that just finished their courses, please let us know because there's so many companies asking for, for, for diving instructors. So that was a huge opportunity because a lot of the people that left, they never really came back. Now, now we're in 2023, so of course, in the last few years, we have uh, created a lot of new diving instructors again. So now we have a sort of like, I like to say it feels like normal. There's enough diving instructors for the companies, but there is not a real surplus just yet. So right now at the moment, it's one of the best opportunities to become a scuba diving instructor as you still have a lot of opportunities to find work. But even if in the future it gets saturated again, remember it gets saturated with all kinds of instructors. It doesn't get saturated with good or superstar instructors. So you will always have a chance if you work hard for it, like I keep saying. And just to get back on that, it's not always how hard you work or how good your opportunity is. It's also important to pick the right location um, in the world where there is enough job opportunity, but also select the right training. Because if you maybe join a dive shop or an instructor or a course director in the future that doesn't really care about you and only cares about you passing your courses and passing your exams because that's good for their marketing and, and they just want to earn money, then you probably won't get enough education to become a good or superstar instructor. So it doesn't matter if you are a great person, you are missing an incredible amount of knowledge to succeed in this industry. So it's extremely important that if you want to make it in this industry, also make sure you pick the right dive shop and the right teachers in the future. You spoke a lot about, you know, the word attitude. For any aspiring young instructor students, 
what traits you like or appreciate and what would you want them to change in terms of that attitude? So to add on to uh, one of the things that I just said, like, for example, we see also a lot of uh, scuba diving instructors, they, they still think that they're sort of like the, 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 the customer that are sitting in the class doing a course and then they, they're reading a book and then they're going to follow that, that book. If you think like that, then that is just not enough. What you really want to do to become a really good and superstar instructor is to absolutely look forward to every single course that you're going to take. Um, take every single bit of information that you're going to get. Uh, create questions to ask to your course director so he can try to give you even additional information that really works for you. And then, of course, try to really always look at what am I going to do tomorrow? What am I going to learn or what am I going to teach? And how can I improve that? And I think what's really important to maybe sit down with a piece of paper and a pen and make some lists and write down, you know, if, 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 if I'm the owner of a dive shop, what if I'm going to hire one person and that has to be the perfect instructor, the superstar, what do I want him to be? And write down those bullet points, like someone that's, that is uh, passionate, that is on time, that works hard, that has a bit of humor, that is a good team player. Make another list the next day where you go, all right, if I am a student, maybe a little bit nervous to go scuba diving and I can create my ultimate superstar instructor, how do I want that person to be? And write those bullet points again, like having patience or, um, you know, smile a bit, caring, and maybe even have overlapping bullet points that say also, you know, having some humor and, uh, and having that passion. And then once you create these lists of, for you and your mind from different angles, creating the superstar instructor, then what you need to do is to follow those bullet points and become that person. And I know that doesn't happen the next day, but every day try to work on those bullet points and on yourself. And before you know it, within a couple of weeks or a couple of months, you are so good. You are so much closer to becoming that superstar instructor. Um, besides other people that maybe don't do this, they do their jobs, they have a drink in the end of the day and watch TV. And I think that is the key. And if you do that already doing your courses, especially when you're doing your uh, instructor development course, you're going to make it in this industry. I can tell you that. Um, I want to also address the elephant in the room. Uh, scuba diving industry, especially the instructors, they see probably one of the highest attrition uh, you know, them moving away from this industry and doing something else. Do you consider it, it to be an issue with the industry or the individual? And uh, what are some of the things that you would change? Yeah, I think that's kind of relates to what we just talked about before. Um, a lot of people, they become dive master instructors for the reason that it is actually not that difficult to, to get there. You know, if you compare it, for example, with a uh, with university, uh, or, you know, you want to become a lawyer. I, I don't know. It depends on the country, I guess. But let's say that takes you four to six to maybe eight years, right? Depending if, you, if you're doing specialized courses. That's an incredibly long time of your life. A lot of studying and extremely expensive. And then, of course, where do you come from in the world? Do you have opportunities to finance that as well eh? from the government or family or, or, or anything else? Um, to become a diving instructor, like we already discussed, can go very fast. I mean, three months to eight months. Uh, so to compare that to the eight years or six years, that's that's fantastic. Second, it's also a lot more affordable. I know it's still an investment, but compared to eight years of university, that's definitely uh, affordable for most people. And um, the exams to actually become it is also not rocket science. So I, I know you need to work for it and it's going to be an amazing feeling when you do your exams and pass. You accomplish something, but it's it's not, you know, you have to go to those six or eight years of university and then do multiple weeks of exams or whatever is compared to it. And why is this important? Because it actually means that many people uh, can become a diving instructor and th you don't have to be the smartest person, the most wealthiest person or having the most amount of time. And because of this, you get a lot, a lot of people doing it. Also, because it, it attracts an incredible lifestyle. You might be living on tropical islands. You know, you're, you're living in a holiday, basically, that never ends compared to maybe working in uh, cities or offices and traffic jams and things like that. 
And why do then so many people start to do different things is because of this reason. It's because you have so many people coming to you, so again, with, with bad attitudes or high expectations or thinking they from day one they're going to make hundreds of thousands of dollars per year. And then if it doesn't work out for them, for the reasons that we discussed earlier, now they start to to change their their um, their career again. And sometimes within the place, or, you know, maybe they, on that tropical island, instead of teaching diving, they might open up a restaurant or they can work online. You know, it's, it's possible these days, which is awesome. Um, or a lot of them, they just go back home again and they, they start doing their, their normal jobs or whatever they did before or something else. And that is not the dive industry that is doing this. It is, again, the dive individuals themselves. But I think it's also, it's not, it's not a good thing, but it, it does filter out sometimes um, some of the people that I don't think you want to have as an instructor teaching your family, right? Those, it is important for them, I guess, to realize it doesn't work for them and they leave and they do something else. Um, we can also say, okay, can we change the dive industry? Can we, can we put the bar higher in, in terms of, you know, more difficult exams or where we can really truly test individual attitudes and things like that. But that is definitely, you know, a paycheck higher than what I'm getting right now. And I think very smart people out there that are working for these uh, organizations have been doing this for a long time and they have an incredible amount of experience and that they, decide that the amount of time that we put into these diving courses to get there is enough, I truly agree on that. And I really believe that even if we increase it by you know, a couple of months or even years or whatever, I mean, a bad person always stays a bad person. Um, in, we can tweak it around a bit, but yeah, it's, it's difficult sometimes to change attitudes. Now, before I wanna finish this one, what I think is important though, it's not a black and white answer. Because I've, I've met incredible instructors out there, like really, really some of the good and best ones after their IDCs or a few years down the road that also didn't make it and they went home and they did their normal jobs. And that's maybe because they just wanted to do or the family wanted them back or they've, they've done their few years as a diving instructor. They loved it and now they just want to do something else. Or unfortunately, they just... Uh, you know, went to a location in the world where the, the job opportunities were just very low, even for an incredible person as an instructor. And then they struggled for too long and then maybe they do run out of money and then they kind of go home and kind of get stuck in their normal life. So it's not saying that if you don't make it, that means you're a horrible person. That's not true at all. Um, but uh, but yeah, that, that's 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 kind of what I see. And again, this is this is my personal sort of opinion, how I kind of see these things. And again, I want to be honest and like you said, gravity and and a little bit down to earth. You know, it is, this is some of the best career opportunities out there. But at the same time, you need to stay realistic and you need to plan the right way, especially planning that it might not work out for you in the future. Um, myself coming from a background of having built a business, I've had this curious question. Scuba diving is considered to be an expensive sport in general and uh, it has various stakeholders. Obviously, I know that uh, in terms of input cost, but why is it expensive? So, yes, you just mentioned that scuba diving uh, can be an expensive hobby. Uh, and that is uh, that is true. It depends, of course, where you are in the world. Some places are way more expensive to go scuba diving than others. Uh, but definitely it, it's pricey sometimes. But then again, when you think about it, we all work very hard in our lives to earn some money, right? To survive, but at the same time, we're trying to get some extra money to enjoy our lives as well. And we enjoy it with hobbies and experiences. And some people are into building model uh, airplanes or boats and, and they are so loving it, but they put real good money into that. Some people, like I said, love golf. So they love to spend money that they earned into a new golf set. And uh, in our world, we all love scuba diving. So we love to spend our money on, uh, on the scuba diving and, and having great experiences. But then I heard from a lot of people when I was an instructor, like, why is it so expensive? Why are you making this so expensive, right? And, and then it's like the answer is not just because, hey, you're liking it, so pay something on it. But there's a lot of people to be paid. Um, it is the diving instructor itself. And sometimes, again, if you work in a place where you might not earn that much in a salary, I think it's kind of, when you think about it, crazy because that diving instructor is not only there to show you fishes. 
he's there or she's there to uh, to keep you safe, you know, to keep you alive in the end of the day. And I, I put a price tag on that. And um, not only that, the, if they do the right job, they don't just give you an experience. They give you the best time of your vacation. Uh, what? Or maybe even your entire lives. And they create a memory that can last for your entire life. So when people call it expensive, it's, it's kind of debatable. The value is great. However, again, I understand that some people don't always have that money. But again, it's not just the instructor because you got the dive resorts themselves. And, you know, we always see these beautiful dive resorts and we think that all these people are super rich. And some of them, they are, they do very well. But um, some of them, they, they might have borrowed, I don't know how much money from the bank to set this up and they have to pay this back for the next 10 years, you know. So, of course, they have to charge their courses a certain way to be able to pay their staff members and also over the, the overhead you know some of them they build a swimming pool for you to have uh, in some cases an easier experience it all costs a lot of money um the equipment manufacturers now we all know i guess we all uh, agree that in not in all cases but in most cases that if you pay uh, a high quality brand shoes computers anything um then they had to charge more than maybe um, a brand that we'd never heard about before or maybe not even real or, you know, and then if you pay a little bit more money, you have a better experience. You know, with my laptop, um, I don't want to say the brand right now, but when I finally invested in that more expensive brand, I was like, wow, and it's still working 20 years down the road. Um, if you put money in a more expensive car, it's going to drive more comfortable and nicer than a cheaper car. They both drive but the more expensive one is better. And you see that very well in, in diving equipment. You know, If you buy your basic regulator system to breathe from, it's going to be probably a better experience than maybe the rental equipment that you get. But if you're now going to put more money into it and get that, that sort of like high-end regulator, yeah, your briefing experience is insane under the water. So your diving experience is going to be insane. And again, you all need to pay for that. In the end of the day, you know, there's more research, more love put into it and more quality. So yeah, it costs a bit more. Having seen this personally, I absolutely agree with you. You know, there's uh, no point putting a price tag to quality and safety. And as you rightly said, it is an experience. So, you know, there is, it is a great value for that particular experience is what I also believe. Anyways, thanks a lot, Marcel, for helping us navigate through different perspectives of this aspirational but tricky bucket list career. And now, as promised to our listeners, I would want them to experience the magic you bring to their night dive specialty ritual every month in Kota. Guys, this is one dive I've seen running houseful all the time and so many people fight to get their name on the boat roster. Uh, let us in on the magic of night dive in your own words, Marcel. Okay, so yeah, super cool that you actually bring that up. Um, so what we're talking about right now is a, is a very special night dive experience. And um, where did this all started was uh, some time ago, before I was a course director, I, uh, I taught, of course, a lot of recreational courses. And where I used to teach here on Kotal, uh, what was very popular to do the night dive, the knife adventure dive during the advanced course. Now, also, um, I always tried really hard and um, I was always very grateful that most of my open water students, they decided to stay with me and do the advanced course. Uh, quite a high percentage, around 80% or, or sometimes even more. And one of the main reasons from all the different reasons why they continued was because I was so passionate about that night dive that they're going to experience. So people were very, very enthusiastic about doing this night dive. And then what happens sometimes, especially when I was assisting other instructors or when I was observing other instructors, but they, they, they did the night dive in a specific way that people came up saying, yeah, it was okay. You know, there wasn't this wow factor that we, that we promised them so much. And uh, I, I was actually quite sad to see because it isn't because the night dive isn't that cool. It is incredible experience, but it's mostly the dive professionals that are leading it the wrong way. And I'm not talking about all of them. Eh? We're talking about a few individuals out there that do this. And they are so enthusiastic to the open water students. Do the advanced course with me. Do the night dive. And sometimes, sadly, a little bit maybe there's some sales uh, initiatives in this. Um, and then when they get to that night dive, they go down when uh, it's, it's still quite light. 
So personally for me, when I was teaching, I was like, okay, that's the first thing I want to change. I want to, I want to go down on this night out when it's actually dark. And, and this is such a small little difference. You just go down 10 minutes later. Uh, and it doesn't impact your life at all. It, you can still go home. You can still watch TV. But what I hear from my students afterwards was incredible. They were like, oh my God, and especially Descent was the best part because it felt like we were landing on another moon or, 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 or another yeah, like a planet. Or we were, we were, I saw another group under me with torches and they looked like spaceships. I, I felt like for the first time, for real, I was in outer space. And I was like, wow, such a small little change by going down when it's truly dark instead of still light or shimmy light made such a difference. And another thing that I noticed as well was the colors itself of the reef. Because especially on tropical reefs, when you have a torch and, and you go uh, close to that reef with the torch, you're gonna see it in its original colors. Absolutely insane. Uh, red, yellow, all the colors of the rainbow, even neon kind of colors. Y you will never see this in anything you do in life. If you get a little bit closer to that reef without touching it uh, huh, in a safe way, the things you're going to see is, is mind-blowing. And it's not just the colors of the reef, but you're going to see uh, aquatic life that is in there. Uh, the, uh, crabs the size of your fingernail, um, certain shrimps, some of the aquatic life, you, they're almost see-through with your torch. You can you can almost see inside of, their, in, inside of their bodies. And I can go on and on for so long, but it is literally, there is no science fiction movie that is better than that. So by doing these small little things, my students in the advanced course, they came up screaming. And I was like, oh my God, are they, were they scared? Did I do something wrong? But there was, there was a scream from happiness. It wasn't really me being really good. I just did tiny, small little differences, like going down when it's dark and, and going closer and stuff like that. So when I then became a course director and I started teaching, you know, the, the, the specialty course, the specialty instructors, I thought, I really want to focus on this. And then I thought, wait a second, not everybody can do the specialty instructor. So let's put this in the IDC course, the instructor course, because it's so important for normal instructors, of course, to, to know this as well when they teach advanced. And then I thought like, but hey, the dive master trainees, they might just become, you know, leaders for fun dives on night dives instead of teachers themselves. So why don't we include them? And then it became that, that event where we had all of our dive master candidates, IDC candidates, MST candidates, and again, the people that did it before, even up to six months before, they always come back to do it again if they're here. We got our own private boat, we got music on the boat, and yeah, then we do this with them, and we get between, I don't know, 20 to 40 people, with of course, lots of th leaders and instructors, all within standards and ratios. So the groups on the water are very small. Eh? We're talking about three to four people. So not only do they have an incredible experience, but I have I can experience this every single month, seeing all these people um, enjoying it so much. And that's why I, I truly believe that I have one of the best jobs. Wow, that was mesmerizing as the first time I heard it in the class. And when I was first time diving with you on that night dive. You know, there's that magic in your words. And I'm so glad the listeners can also feel the same emotions. Well... It was such a pleasure to have you on this podcast and I'm pretty sure it'll bring in fresh perspectives to the audience who are considering a bucket list career in scuba diving. Thanks a lot for your time and wishing you all the best for the upcoming successful IDC batches this year and the years to come. This wraps up the episode of the Bucket List Project podcast. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode and the conversation on becoming a scuba diving instructor as a bucket list career. Do you think this is suited for you? Well, I hope this podcast at least throws some light and helps you take that decision with a lot of clarity. If you liked what you listened to, then please do subscribe to our podcast, which is available both in Spotify and Apple. See you next week and until then, have a great time. <laughs>